Hey guys, how's it going? It's Brian from the Paranormal Detectives and in today's video I'm going to talk to you about how the Ouija board works, how to use it, the risks and how much of it is actually true. This right here is the Ouija board, also known as Spirit Board. This is the one that we actually use on our investigations. This is the one we've used so far. Um, basically, the Ouija board is known as many different things. It can also be referred to as a Spirit Board or a Talking Board. Um, but essentially, they're all the same thing. So basically, guys, a very quick and brief history about the Ouija board. It was actually designed as a board game and never a paranormal tool. It was designed out of fun, so couples, for example, would get together, they'd play the Ouija board together, they'd put the planchette on the board, and they'd ask a series of questions about their future together, or whatever else they wanted to know. And the board would spell out messages, and they would live uh, in the hope that these came true. So although it may have started as a little bit of fun, the board ended up in certain horror films, Hollywood got involved, and basically, before you know it, this board is used to communicate with the dead. And yeah, that, that's, that's basically it. With that in mind, it actually makes you think, well, how genuine is the Ouija board? You'll ask some people and they say that they've used a Ouija board before and it was one of the greatest tools they've ever used. It was a great experiment. They had some great answers and they've never had any issues with it. You'll ask some people and they'll also say that they got no results and it was pointless that the human body itself actually moves the planchette and there's nothing paranormal to it. And on the other side of the extreme, you'll get some people who will actually recommend you never touch one ever um, because they've personally used one, they've experienced a ton of bad things happen to them or they've known someone who's used one and uh, it's just been regret ever since doing that basically. So there's a lot of different arguments for and against Ouija boards. Now it actually says on, on the spirit board here, use with caution. So personally we have our own opinions. Essentially we're paranormal investigators. I always wanted to do a Ouija board before we started investigating. However, the idea of it did used to creep me out. But as I got older, as I got more aware, I guess, of the paranormal. I became more skeptical of using these and so we decided to get one and start using it. And we have had some answers, we have had some um, responses on this board, but how paranormal they are, who knows. Either way, regardless of being skeptical, it's not something that I'd, I'd recommend playing around with because you never know. There's a lot of things in the paranormal that we're never going to understand and Although I have my own thoughts about the Ouija board and I'm very sceptical of it, um, there's nothing to say that there is some truth because to have so many people say they've experienced something or something negative or something bad happened to them after using one of these, the amount of people that say that, could they all be wrong? Talking about the rules of the Ouija board now, it's been going on for that long. I don't actually think anyone knows the true rules in and out. Uh, there seems to be that many of them. So yeah, a few things to be aware of basically. So take the Ouija board seriously. Um, if you are a paranormal investigator, if you're doing a ghost hunt, you don't want fake answers, you want real answers. You want to make sure that any reactions you're getting are genuine. The only way to do that really is to be doing this board with people you trust primarily. So you don't want anyone in the group who's doing this Ouija board and they're going to start moving the planchette or the glass. You know, at the end of the day, if you're doing this for genuine reasons and you want to be genuine about it, you want to take it seriously as well. So that goes with all the precautions that come with it. As I said, you want to be with trustworthy people. But if you feel that you can't trust anyone, um, you might be tempted to play this alone. That's one rule which you want to avoid. Um, they always recommend that you never perform a Ouija board session on your own. And the reason being for this is basically you are vulnerable, you're on your own. The energy that may come through may be too strong, it may be overwhelming, it could come into your life, it could take you over, it could do anything to you. Um, 
if you're doing this board on, on your own, it's said that you're very vulnerable, you should stay away from anything like that. So always do this board with two or more people. They say that the more people, the better, because the more energy flows through this board then. But at the same point, uh, it can get a little crowded if, you, if, if, you're, if you've got 10 or 12 people with a finger on the planchette, it could get very crowded. Um, so you need to find a happy medium, really. You need a good amount of people, um, but also make sure it's not too many. So the second thing that you want to do is, ideally, um, out of your group of people who are playing this Ouija board, you want to pick a leader, somebody that's going to lead this board, somebody that's going to ask all the questions. It should always be the same person doing it. You also want that one person to be asking questions at a fair rate. You don't you don't want you don't want them to be asking ten questions in the space of sixty seconds. It needs to be clarified. It needs to be uh, calm. You need to be patient. So you need to actually be patient enough to give the board time to respond to you. One person to ask questions, one leader. Take your time, be patient, see what happens. Before you actually start, you want to enter this with a very clear head, a clear conscious. If you're not feeling particularly great, it's said that you shouldn't be doing one of these. Again, if you're under the influence of alcohol or drugs, you shouldn't be performing one of these if you're not mentally uh, happy then you shouldn't be doing one of these there are all reasons and there are all ways of making yourself vulnerable you want to talk to a good spirit so how do you know that spirit is good well you have to take everything with this board with a pinch of salt you may come into contact with a spirit and they may say they're good but how can you trust it you can't unfortunately so any weird signals that you get any weird vibes you need to be extra careful with who you're talking to. So a little bit about the board now. So again, as you can see, the spirit board. And in the very two top corners, you have a picture of a sun and a moon. When you think about the sun, every single day it comes, it brings light, it brings warmth, heat, energy, all of those good things. The moon, for example, the sun goes down, everything gets colder, everything gets darker. So basically, since ancient times, one of the biggest arguments, if you like, one of the biggest wars was good versus evil. And good versus evil, light versus dark, they're all very similar ways of actually communicating that message across. So if you get a good spirit, basically the planchette or the glass might move to the sun. If it moves to the moon, you want to close that communication down because that's basically them admitting that it's a bad spirit, it's a negative entity, and you don't want that. So how do you actually get rid of that spirit? If, if you've contacted a negative spirit, how do you get rid of it? Simple. Again, right at the bottom of the board, goodbye. So you'll have the planchette, and you will make sure that that does go all the way to goodbye. You will ensure that the board is closed at that point. When you've actually done a session, and let's say you have communicated with a good spirit, you've got a message out, you've had a communication, and it's time to call it a day. Um, you want to make sure that the board is actually closed because using the Ouija board is said to be like, you're basically leaving a gateway open. If you, if you don't say goodbye to the board, you could be potentially letting entities into your house or wherever you've done this, um, but also your life as well. So doing one of these, without closing it properly. Essentially, you're just allowing it, it's just a big open door. So what they say is you always have to say goodbye to the board. Uh, thank the spirits before you do. Um, no harm in a bit of respect. So say thank you, and then again, make sure the planchette moves to goodbye. Now, if I know I've just put the planchette on now, I'm not actually playing this on my own, so don't worry. So if the planchette ever moves to all four corners of the board, it's said that you've reached a negative spirit, a negative entity. But a little bit more alarming than that is all four corners of the board is said to signify the spirit trying to actually escape from the board. So if that happens, do not hesitate to close the board down because that could be awful. Another way you can tell if you've contacted a negative entity is if the planchette starts moving in a figure of eight. That basically also um, signifies something demonic. 
So where should you actually perform a Ouija board? There, there are a list of places where they actually say you shouldn't do one, i.e. graveyards, priories, uh, any, any sort of religious building in your own house. So, going back to the comment about doing the Ouija board on, in your own home, uh, I can say that two locations specifically that we went to in series two, and that would be the cage and 30 East Drive. They actually do not allow Ouija boards to be used and they, they don't tolerate Ouija boards to be used on their premises. Now, we were told at the cage that Ouija board has been used there before and it actually heightens the activity. It makes things 10 times worse after one's happened. 30 East Drive, exactly the same. When a Ouija board has been used in the past, uh, the activity just went through the roof. So the owners of the properties basically put up a clause saying no Ouija boards allowed and that was it, that was final. So how can you protect yourself? Common sense is one, basically. So as I've just said, there are certain ways that the Ouija board is meant to signify to you if you've reached something negative. But also it's said that if you light white candles, that white candles would actually protect you. Uh, white is a colour of protection and it would keep bad spirits at bay, basically. I haven't actually put this planchette on the board much, really, and one thing I definitely haven't done until now is just left it on the board. Um, that is one rule that you are absolutely, positively never meant to do. Leaving the planchette on the board is basically, again, kind of leaving the door open for this thing to do whatever the hell it wants. You basically keep it aside from the Ouija board. You don't put it together or touch in or anything. You don't you definitely don't leave it on top. You only place it when you're going to start the communication off and then you get yourself, other people, a finger or two fingers each and then you start your communication. When the board is done it's said that the planchette should be flipped over so move to goodbye first and then flipped over to completely cut any communication off from the Ouija board. So if you've done a Ouija board and you're one of those people who You've, you've done one and maybe you started to regret it, maybe things have gone all weird for you and you kind of wish you never did. How would you dispose of this thing? You've probably seen in some of the horror films how, you know, certain things, you, you'll put petrol on them, you'll set them on fire and then the next day they're there again, completely untouched, unharmed. You might throw it away and it might be back on your doorstep the next day. So, how do you actually properly dispose of a Ouija board? Well. One thing that you're never meant to do is one of the things I just said, uh, setting this thing on fire, don't do it. You said you're never ever meant to burn a Ouija board. Basically, any spirits or entities in this board will scream and apparently escape. Personally, as I said, I'm quite skeptical about this board, so I think if I threw this away tomorrow or if I set this on fire, there wouldn't be any comeback. The correct way of disposing a Ouija board apparently is to break this thing into seven pieces and then to bury all the pieces uh, separately. That way, no spirits can ever come through again. One of the other rules of the Ouija board is you're never ever meant to talk about or ask about God, if God is real or anything like that. However, this is another rule which I know some people have broken. Another thing that you're never meant to ask about is death. I personally think that if you're gonna start asking about your own death and how you're going to die, what year you're going to die, um, rather than it actually being a supernatural kind of answer, I kind of think that it's just going to do nothing but plant a seed in your head and you're, go you're going to start living your life in a certain way from the answers from this board if you actually believe the answers. Um, so I do not advise ever asking about death. So if you want to go down the sceptical approach of the Ouija board, there is something basically known as the idiomotor effect. The human body is full of you know, thousands of nerves and muscles and all sorts of things. And a lot of these we don't actually feel, we don't know. Uh, the idiomotor effect is basically the effect that the human body has on objects that we touch or handle, and we don't even realise it. It's always been said by the sceptics, it's actually the people involved in the Ouija board that are pushing the planchette, but they don't realise. So even if you're with a group of people who you absolutely positively trust, there may be slight movements coming from the human body which you're not able to detect or you're not realising you're actually doing. Uh, pushing this in 
a direction. Now if you've got something mentally in your head as well and your body is pushing this thing without realising then there's a good chance it might spell out something which is already on your mind. Personally I'm very sceptical of the Ouija board but as I said earlier in the video to have so many people use one of these in the past and then say how much they regretted it and how many weird and wonderful things happened to them and you know these are the people that would strongly advise you never touch one in your life. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, if you did give it a thumbs up please, subscribe and stay tuned for more, uh, we've got a lot of things upcoming very soon so stay tuned now. Thank you very much, cheers.